Previously, we'd had an amazing sail up to Anagada, the northernmost of the British Virgin Islands, where we enjoyed Anagada's natural beauty and stunning turquoise waters. In this video, we sail south again, 15 miles from Anagada to the eastern end of Virgin Gorda, coming into Oil Nut Bay. Leaving Anagada, going back to Virgin Gorda. Not exactly with the speed of light we are traveling. Very light winds today. We are doing only five knots. But who's in a rush when we are surrounded by this beautiful sea color? In contrast to our lively sail over to Anagada, our return journey was extremely tranquil in light winds and a flat sea. Farewell, beautiful Anagada. We just couldn't resist getting the drone up into the air as we passed over this wonderful blue water as we sailed behind Horseshoe Reef. The garden now well behind us underneath the horseshoe reef and this beautiful blue water just look at the color of that changing course we are going to go to Necker Island and see if Sir Richard Branson is available for a cup of tea For anyone who doesn't know Richard Branson, he is one of the nicest self-made billionaires. British of course. His brand is Virgin, as in Virgin Airlines, Virgin Records, etc. So I guess it's no surprise that he should own an island in the Virgin Islands. Having a lovely upwind sail. Through this stunningly blue water. You can actually see the shadow of the boat on the bottom there. Gently going along at six knots towards Necker Island. As we approach Virgin Gorda, we swing into the back of Necker Island, but unfortunately Richard is not at home today. This is East Coast Necker Island, from a different angle. Richard, we're coming for tea! This is probably the closest we will ever get 
to Necker Island. They have planted three palm trees on the sandy spit, making it look exactly like a classic castaway island. South from Necker Island, we pass over the reef and then behind Eustatia Island and into Allnut Bay, anchoring at the far end. Eustatia Island. Captain over here is focusing. Going over a reef, always in focus. Here we are passing Eustatia Island, where we later come back to anchor. Oil Nut Bay, with the north side of Virgin Gorda. And we drop the anchor just inside the main reef, protecting us from the Atlantic swell. Not a bad place to have lunch in Oil Nut Bay. Looking over to Necker Island. And looking down to the lunch table. We are having pork and salad. And in here, this is the person cooking. Hello. Hello. Looking east here, into All Nut Bay Resort, which seems to have recovered very quickly from Hurricane Irma, which struck the BVI's as a Cat 5 18 months ago. Access to this eastern end of Virgin Gorda is only by boat. This is the resort shuttle, ploughing its way through the stunning blue waters. From our anchorage we take the dinghy into the resort, being sure that we wouldn't be allowed in. But surprisingly, we were wrong. Oil Nut Bay Resort, up on the hill. Some villas still under reconstruction, of course. Very nice beach. We got permission to walk on the beach. I could take a resort like this for a, a week or two without getting too bored. I bet you can. Oil Nut Bay, one of the most prestigious residential resorts in the BVI's. That's looking over to Necker Island there, Richard Branson's little pad. And along the beach here, tucked in amongst these palms, are the most exquisite residences. And absolutely nobody on the beach. Apart from one. This little residence isn't much, all you get is two hammocks and a lawn. But it's quite nice, I guess. Especially if you've got one of them on the beach. Hello! Not a bad viewer. Huh? We are the only ones on this amazing beach. We have paradise to ourselves. This is the pool area. Again, a few people around, but nobody sunbathing. Just look at that bay. What do you think? Do you think it's up to our standard? Oh, There's a place? I mean, I saw a couple of blades of grass out of place. Right, a couple I of hedges that still needed trimming. Some coconuts that were about to fall. But other than that, it's not bad, is it? Yeah, it's 
nice reflection of us in the window. We can imagine ourselves inside, almost. You wouldn't want to live there anyway, would you? You don't want to live on an island, remember? Yeah, but I want a house like this. Yeah, but not on an island. No, no. So this one's out. You wouldn't have this one. Even if I gave it to you, right? Mm. <laughs> From the beach, this was one of our favourites. But now we're here, we're not sure about the Chinese arch. I guess we could remove that with a chainsaw. Chainsaw it down and put something more simple. Beautiful water reminds us of Petit St. Vincent in the Grenadines. What colour, eh? Well, not bay. Really beautiful. With Wana not being able to decide which property I should buy her, we return empty-handed to our more humble floating home. Then we move to anchor behind the shelter of Eustatia Island for the night, and the following day we take a dinghy ride into the east side of Gorda Sound. The luxurious resorts in this area all took a massive hammering by Hurricane Irma, and we found all were in the middle of being rebuilt. Eustatia Island, not a bad place to wake up to this morning. Had a bit of an interesting night because it had some current through here. We ended up turning around against the wind and riding over the anchor. We've left cloudy and some very nice water. on a little excursion. We came into Gorda Sound through a Saba Rock Passage with Prickly Pear Island to starboard. Our first stop was to see what had been Yacht Club Costa Esmeralda. Virgin Gorda Sound. Not too busy. This is how it had previously looked, with its marina full of luxury yachts. It's now closed for business, with its marina having been swept away. Further along, we pass what was left of a once proud Bitter End Yacht Club, almost totally erased from where it had stood. Bitter End, under reconstruction. It's all cleared out and looks like they will start from scratch rebuilding it. This inset photo gives us an idea of how it looked 18 months ago. Prickly Pear Island. Just next to Bitter End is Saba Rock, also severely damaged but now under full reconstruction. Saba Rock under reconstruction. This is where the Bitter End Yacht Club was. This is how it used to be. And this is how it looked immediately following the aftermath of Irma. What dreadful destruction. And as we go back to Cloudy Bay, we fly over Saba Rock on the way. The inset shows Saba Rock looking back over towards Bitter End. Lastly, we pass by the Eustatia Resort Beach. You can see the hillside is still struggling to come back to life after being totally stripped of its lush green vegetation. Eustatia Resort.
Hello, hello, hello. Cloudy Bay, Cloudy Bay. It's Richard here. Permission to come aboard for tea. From our anchorage at Eustatia Island, we motored down the northeast side of Virgin Gorda to Spanish Town, where we anchor next to the famous baths. Living oil nut bay. Oh, don't want to leave. Going for a prettier place. Can't get enough of this watercolor. Spectacular. This satellite image better relates to what we see from the boat as we pass close to the shore. Passing Prickly Pear Island, the entrance to Gorda Sound, Mosquito Island, and Cow Bay, and then around Mountain Point. Prickly Pear Island, and the entrance into Virgin Gorda Sound. Behind the reef, small island, it's Mosquito Island, with a small resort. Close up, sort of. Nice garden between the villas. Cow Bay on Virgin Gorda. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they call it that. Mm -hmm. Once past Mountain Point, we motor close to the shore, passing Long Bay, which is a very popular sheltered anchorage, Nail Bay with its lush golf course, Baraka Point with a wonderfully designed boutique hotel on the cliffs, Mountain Trunk Bay, Maho Bay with its residential development. Pond Bay, Savannah Bay, where we later anchor, and finally, Little Dix Bay, which was under reconstruction and too shallow for us to enter. Long Bay, on the leeward side of Virgin Gorda. In theory, these monsters are forbidden in the BVIs. Only in theory. That's Long Bay at the top, with Nail Bay Golf Course below. Goodness knows where they get the water to keep it that lush green. Did you notice the interesting phenomena on this coast? The waves actually go backwards. And while you ponder on that, just coming into view on Baraka Point is a Martello Tower. This is a 19th century defence fortification which the British built along all the coasts of their empire. These are still prevalent on many Caribbean islands, as well as the coasts of Britain. And this is the unique boutique hotel, very nicely done. Maho Bay, with Mango Bay Resort and several villas. Motoring close to the shoreline, well, as close as we can, outside of the reefs. To record again all the bays, which captain over here accidentally deleted Oopsie. the footage of. Pond Bay with yet more villas. It's interesting to see the hillsides got completely stripped of vegetation by the hurricane, yet the indented bay areas got a little more protection, so less carnage. Now we fly down Maho Bay, passing the Mango Bay Resort. Again, you can see how the hillside got stripped, while mature trees in the residential area survived okay. On the headland there used to be Katish Point Great House, totally devastated in its truly vulnerable position here. This is how it used to look. This property is now for sale and we later pay it a visit by car.
and finally Pond Bay. And Savannah Bay, which is our favorite here on Virgin Gorda. We spent the night anchored off of it the other week. Beautiful water and spectacular beach. Little Dix Bay with Rosewood Resort still under reconstruction. From Collison Point, we pass Spanish Town, then anchor off of Valley Trunk Beach, ready for an afternoon visit to the baths. Mm -hmm. 